Hey lovely people, it's your girl Nana and this is Nana Nation. So if you're new here, a very special welcome to you. Please go ahead and subscribe as we dive into today's topic. And to my amazing subscribers, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I mean, you guys are the reason why we do this. I appreciate you guys so much. So today we're going to be talking about the various ways to immigrate to the US, the various ways to move to this country. So now I'm just going to list them and then we're going to break it further in the video. So the the first way to immigrate to the US is through family-based immigration for people who have their mothers here, people who have their fathers here, if your husband is here or if your wife is here, they can bring you to the US. The second way is through the DV lottery, which is even the easiest one. It gives you all the privileges, but unfortunately, it's the hardest to win. So the DV lottery is the second way that people move to this country. The third way is through student visas. A lot of people are using this, so many youths. You can actually find your school online, you apply and all that good stuff. So student visas are also a good way through which people come to this country and then the next way is through um, a tourist visa why am I saying tourist like T-H a tourist visa English okay so a tourist visa is the next way um you can immigrate to the US that's another way and another one is a business visa if you just want to come do business here and all that stuff so yeah so now that I've introduced introduced you guys to the topics I'm just gonna break it down one after the other stay tuned <music> So the first way of immigrating to the US is by family-based immigration. For those who have their family members here, direct family members, if your husband is here or your wife is here, if your dad is here or your mom is here, these are direct family members that can file for you. They are going to file a form that is called Form I-130. That's the form that is called Petition for Alien Relative. If you are in Cameroon, you are in India, you are in Nigeria or wherever, you are the alien and your relative here in the US is the one filing for you, the Form 130 for the alien relative. So when they file for you, they'll submit a form, they print it online, they fill it, and then they send it to the USCIS, and then they're going to take like a year to go through the form, and then they're going to be asking them documents throughout this period. They'll be calling your family member, can you send us an affidavit of support? Can you send us your tax return? Can you send this and that? They'll be asking so many documents from your family member. Sometimes the procedure is stretched like for a whole year, other times for up to 18 months, and sometimes if your family member is not smart by sending all the documents right on time, you can even stay for like two years before you come to this country. So that's the first way of immigrating to the U.S. For those who have direct family members here, they will file for you. And the form is like a thousand dollars and you know a thousand and a hundred dollars something of that sort so it's not small money for those of you who have family members in cameroon in the u.s sorry and then you're sitting back in cameroon saying why has my husband not filed for me why has my wife not filed for me why has my daddy not filed for me it's not easy maybe your daddy has about six kids in cameroon imagine two thousand dollars or one thousand something dollars times six kids that's a lot of money so sometimes you guys just have to be a little patient with them while they work and accumulate the money so they can file for you guys so that would be the first way of bringing people into this country country family-based immigration so the second way of immigrating to the US will be the DV lottery program which is actually the easiest and the, like the most hassle-free way of coming to the US when you get your DV lottery like mm, your life is so easy you're going to come to this country you're going to get your green card you're going to get everything is going to be easy peasy unfortunately this happens to be the most difficult one to get because it happens on like chance and probability if I can say that this is a program that the US opens to the rest of the world it gives a chance to about 50,000 people to come to this country. So imagine 50,000 people out there in um, Cameroon, in India, in Bangladesh, in Turkey, in Europe, and, and you know everywhere just struggling to get to this country but there's only 50,000 chances and all these millions of applications coming in sometimes you may be a lucky one and your application may be picked, you know they may choose you and give you a chance. Other chance is just difficult to win but you know when you finally win the DV lottery mm, your life is going to be sweet. You travel to this country hassle free. I mean those set the day for your interview you go to the embassy you ace the interview you answer all your questions well and then you, your family looks for money they buy the flight you know you buy your basic needs and all that stuff you find a family member here or a friend or a relative 
that you will come and stay with and it's so easy once you travel and come to the u.s you know you stay in the u.s for like two to six weeks your green card comes in the mail you take your green card you see you're like what is this my green card yeah that's yours your identity you use it you can get a job you have so many privileges with your green card you can equally use it to travel back home as many times as you want so yeah the green card conveys so many privileges that would be the second way of coming to this country the dv lottery it's very 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 beautiful but it's also so hard to win but i always encourage people to keep trying you never know you can try this year and it doesn't favor you. You try the next year, you never know, you know. With a little bit of luck, with a little bit of prayers, you know, everything will work in your favor. Just keep trying. You never know when it's going to be your turn. So the Divi Lottery for 2021, the results are out. I mean, people who are traveling already know. If you played the Lottery 2020 and you have not checked your result, just go to usstate.gov. There's a place where you can put your confirmation number. There's a place where you can put your name, your email, and all that stuff, and then they're going to give you your results. So for those of you who played the Divi lottery 2020 is good to go check sign on the u.s website usstate.gov and then you go put in your confirmation number the number they give you when you play the lottery make sure you don't forget your numbers don't misplace your numbers they're also very important put in the number put in your email put in your last name and then they're going to give you a result they're going to tell you whether it was successful for you or not and don't lose hope if you do not pass if you do not have it no problem there's always hope there's always um, opportunities to try next year and the year after you know one day you just may get it so another great way through which people come to this country is through student visas and this is the one which a lot of youths have been using recently for student visas it's like you have to be actively involved because you actually have to search for your school you have to look for school programs if you're in Cameroon for example you can apply to come study law at the University of Chicago you can apply to come do your master's in business administration at the University of Boston so you're actively searching for schools online you go to Google you search for schools in the US and then you apply for specific school programs that you want to come study here so there's different types of student visas you know so sometimes when you apply for these schools you're lucky enough and the school extends an admission letter to you the school tells you that okay we are admitting you to come study law at the university of chicago now you have to do your whole procedure of finding um you know a visa form you have to file for your visa categories online there's an f1 visa for students who want to come study purely academic fields maybe you want to come have your first degree in law maybe you want to come have your master's in business administration or journalism or whatever you're coming to study here your category of visa you're going to apply for is going to be like the f1 visa we equally have um m1 visas for people who are coming to study like more professional or vocational fields if you're coming to study like fashion and designing textile and industry and all those stuff yeah you're going to apply for an m1 visa with the admission letter you already have from the schools so you can see how um it's more participatory you have to be actively involved hunting for the schools searching for the schools applying here and there and sometimes it's not cheap there's application fees too you have to pay application fees and submit applications to so many universities and if you're lucky one or two of these universities will extend an admission letter to you and then you use the admission letters you know to find the category of visas that fit you maybe an f1 visa or an m1 visa or a j1 visa j1 visas are also there for people who want to come do like student exchange missions if you just want to come for an um, an internship or a seminar you can apply for a j1 visa so yeah these are the various degrees of student visas that you can apply for and as i said earlier it's more participatory it involves a lot of money sometimes maybe you're coming to study for a program that the fee is like six thousand dollars or five thousand dollars your family has to look for the money and all that stuff and so um, sometimes you need like a affidavit of support somebody has to block a huge sum of money at the bank account somewhere that you're going to use that you're going to show to them you're going to prove to them that i have enough money i'm coming to the u.s as a student i have enough money to take care of my fees you guys should not think i'm coming to bother your government i have enough money i'll be able to pay for my fees or be able to pay for my day-to-day -day living i'll be able to afford my lifestyle in the u.s so that's how, that's like the assurance they need for you to not come and pestering them for you to not come and be bothering them I don't know but that's just how it works at a certain point of your application they'll ask you to provide an uh, affidavit of support so for student visas they'll ask you a few requirements you prepare them and for the day of your interview you go to the u.s embassy say in yaoundé or in abuja or in uh, mumbai india or wherever you are and if you ace your interview they're going to give you a visa and you know when they give you a visa it doesn't mean they give you a passport on the same day they tell you to go and come back after two three days or you know after one week and then they give everything back to you and after that 
like you buy your flight and you travel and before you know it you are in the u.s studying law or whatever you wanted to come study some people actually come here and abandon the studies others come here and they go through with the studies and then they are smart enough to extend their student visas at the end of its expiry and before you know it they get a permanent residence status so everything is possible it just depends on how you work it like you gotta work it boo. and while you are in the u.s with your student visas if you're smart enough you would know how to convert your student visa at the end of your student program to a permanent residence in the u.s that's what so many people do they actually come here as students you know and one thing leads to another they are smart they do everything well and they end up with a permanent residence card they, re they end up um sometimes even as a u.s citizen so yeah you just have to be smart in your dealings smart in the way you do your things and if you have to be like a law-abiding citizen or a law-abiding permanent residence that's where everything starts if you abide by the laws you're hardworking you file your taxes every year they, they consider all those things so that even when you want to file you know to be like a citizen and all that stuff you have so many good records speaking for you they know you are an upstanding citizen they know you're hardworking they know you're contributing to the government you're paying taxes you know you're an upstanding person they can easily give you their citizenship so the next way through which people immigrate to the US is through adoption and this operates by um, through a mechanism where a family member based in the US can choose to adopt a family member back um, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, or wherever they are. You can choose to adopt your cousin or your nephew or your nieces back home in Cameroon and then you bring them to the US. How this operates is that your family member here is going to fill a form called um, Form I, um, I think 1 800. Form I 800A, your family member here is going to fill the form. It's about $775, um, I think, plus $85 for biometrics, that's your fingerprints, your photos, and all that stuff. Stuff, yeah so the family member here is going to fill the form i um 800a through um after following a couple of procedures you know adoption intercountry adoption first of all you're adopting somebody in cameroon somebody in nigeria somebody in india you have to respect cameroon's laws you have to respect india's laws on adoption so you must have gone through the legal route to adopt this child in cameroon the guardians of this child or their parents must have given you express authority to say okay they must give you their consent to say okay you can adopt my daughter you can adopt my son so when they've given you their authority or you know they go ahead to adopt their child that's the first way that's the first step you get the authority from them and then the child has to be there's an age limit for adoption for inter um i think country adoptions in the u.s it has to be like 16 you cannot adopt children who have passed the age 16 to bring to the u.s so if the child is below 16 is their lock you can adopt them and then after you've concluded everything in cameroon you come to the U.S. and then you file your Form I-800A to bring the child to the U.S. And just like every other application process, when it's time, USCIS is going to relay with the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria or the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon or India, for example. And then the child is going to be convened to the embassy. The child will go to the embassy for um, to, for questioning, you know, for the interview. So ask the child a couple of questions to know if the child really knows this person claiming to be their auntie who wants to adopt them. You know, immigration is like that. It's complicated. A lot of Africans, a lot of people out there, they use it like not the way it was intended, you know, just to bring their family members here. And sometimes people lie. So that's why they want to find out all those things. When you go for the interview, they'll be asking so many tricky questions. Do you know this person? He says, like, because you said in your application fee that this is your cousin. So they'll be asking the niece, do you know this person? Is this your uncle? Is this your auntie? If the child go and say no, meanwhile, you put on the document that that's your niece or your nephew, it may complicate the case. So the answers always have to match. Whatever you write on your application fee has to match with what this person is saying during the interview so you want to make sure you're prepping you know your children for the interview and all that stuff so adoption is the next way through which people come to this country so the next category of visas like the next way you can immigrate to this country is through employment visas and employment visas is like for a company here in the u.s or an association or an organization who call you in cameroon and ask you that we have seen your your breakthrough research in technology or you know in science we want to invite you to come teach in the university of chicago we want to see you we want to invite you to come teach in our school you know and all that stuff you have to be a genius you have to be somebody who's really exceptional with great results in your field of work so employers from the u.s could contact you and then they talk to you they're like we want to bring you over and then you tell them okay sure you guys can go ahead then the employers now will fill a form um one i140 for you and they'll submit it to uscis.gov you know and then uscis will get back to you you know discuss with you tell you schedule a day for your interview and all that stuff at the embassy you go do your interview everything goes well you can 
to the US. That's another way which people come to this country through employment visas. But it's not easy because for employment visas, you really have to be exceptional. You have to be either a groundbreaking researcher in the science in the science field or you know in technology field, in IT field. You must be somebody that is reputable. Your work is known all over. So that way they cannot even they cannot even like argue the fact that you're coming to add value to their country. They cannot argue the fact that you're coming to bring value to this great country. So another way of coming to the US will be through employment visas. Maybe you are a genius. You know these children that are like child protégés. If you are a children, let me say protégé. I was trying to say prodigy. English will not shame us. So, so yeah, if you are like a child prodigy, they'll bring you to the US. Like this child is the best in math and science. This child is the best in STEM education. Like we think your child can do great and all those stuff. Yeah. So that's another way through which you can come to this country. If you are a genius, if you are like a great researcher, if you're like a remarkable person and you're a person of excellence, you know, your name is really known. You can have a company here in the U.S. that will extend um, an employment visa to you. They'll send it to the USCIS and then the processing and everything will be done. They will get back to you and then you will tell them, yeah, sure, I want to come. You guys will send it in for the interview and all that stuff and you can come to the U.S. That's another way through which people in the U.S., um, through which people immigrate to the U.S. through employment visas. All right, so with this, I think these are the various visa categories that we had to discuss today. These are the various means through which people immigrate to the U.S. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below i'll be answering your questions if you have any recommendations like any video you want to see me shoot if you want me to talk more about any category of those visas i mentioned like i could broaden it for you if you have like a special video request let me know in the comment section below i'll be filming that video for you thank you guys so much for watching this video i remain your girl onana if it is your first time on this channel please don't go without subscribing because you are definitely going to love it here on this channel we talk about things entertainment we talk about african recipes and we do lifestyle we also talk about very helpful advice you know to our community to the African community and you know to just everybody watching so thank you guys so much for watching I remember your girl Unana don't forget to subscribe like comment and share the video so um, we can get so many people helped some people just want to know this stuff but um, they don't have enough information around this topic so yeah I'll gladly volunteer the little I know I'll gladly share my little knowledge with you guys so thank you so much stay safe everybody I love you guys don't forget to subscribe oh if you don't subscribe I will blow Calabash up for you <laughs> so please subscribe guys like and, and you know share the video on all your groups on all your platforms and i'll see you guys in my next video goodbye <laughs>